So this is the modelling that I've been doing and, and so I, this, this was done with the purpose of trying to explain the, the, the data that uh, was extracted from um, one of the movies of, of a real falling slinky. What you see in this one is that the turns at the top are, are snapping together uh, behind a, a front that propagates down. So the blue section at the top is the part that has collapsed. So initially nothing's collapsed and then more and more of the slinky is, uh, is collapsed as that front runs down the slinky. And how close is that to what actually happens? Well, I think that if you watch the movies, you can see that the turns don't collapse instantly. So how did you improve on that model? Well, I assume that there's essentially a fixed number of turns over which that collapse occurs behind the front. Those turns, they're not collapsing. They're not hammering together at the top. They're, they're oh, yeah, you can gradually see relaxing. And in fact, I've colored blue the section that is uh, under collapse or has collapsed. And that's, that's far more obvious if you look at the other video. The but this to me looks much more realistic, much you well, know, it is. more true to... That's why I did it. So if someone asked you why when you let go of this link it is the bottom not fall, what do you say? I'd say that there is, you know, what you're doing, you're changing something at the top and then there's a finite time for that information about the change to get to the bottom of the slinky. I mean, that happens even with a rigid bar, with a steel bar. It's just that the time is very, very short. But a lot of people on the internet get uncomfortable with the term information. I mean, what are we saying by information it's in a, a signal. physics sense? It's a signal. So it's something, uh, you know, whenever you do something physically to, to affect a change, causality is, you know, you do something and there's a, um, a cause and an effect. And, that's, and between the two, uh, information has to propagate, a signal has to propagate if they're not at the same location, physically at the same location. So how long does it take for the compression wave to get from the top to the bottom? About a third of a second is mm -hmm. the collapse time. Is there, is there any way to extend that time? Because, you know... If you decrease the, the, um, the spring constant, make it... Uh, a softer spring key. Yes, okay. then that takes longer to collapse which is sort of makes sense, the wave yeah. propagates more slowly. If you make it more, if you increase the mass of the slinky, it gets longer as well. There's more inertia in that collapse process in the wave that, that yeah. You need, you need kind of a heavy slinky that is very yeah. loose. Yeah, it's odd, isn't it? What, like that's, a, you reckon like a lead slinky or? Oh, I, <laughs> <laughs> if you have extended systems, then to consider the, the motion of the center of mass in an extended system, you only need to consider the, the external force that acts on, on the, the center, system. yeah, on the center of mass, and that's gravity. And that starts in acting, you know, instantly that this is released. It's there to begin with, but it's suspended, it's held up. And then once you take away that suspension, that, that centre of mass has to start accelerating downwards instantly. So if you watch the movie, you see that the red dot indeed, it's a good test for the modelling, the red dot does start to accelerate. And you didn't build that into the model, you no. basically allowed that to... After the fact, I calculate, the, you know, once you've got the model at each time step, I calculate where that centre of mass is, and it, you know, it, it does indeed start to fall immediately. I think we were, we were talking about this earlier and you actually see the bottom of this, this thing start to rotate yeah. about now. So there's yeah. some kind of torsional mode, some twisting mode um, that makes sig signal that gets down to the bottom of the slinky first, you know, rushes ahead, but it doesn't actually relax, it doesn't release any tension clearly because the bottom just stays sitting there. Mm. It's only when those are, all those other turns come down that the um, that tension is relaxed. I think this one's kind of neat. So in this one you don't let go of the top of the slinky, but you hold the slinky collapsed to the top and you release the bottom and you hold the, you keep the top fixed and, and so what it does is it oscillates back and forth. That's a basic mode in which that whole thing can oscillate. And of course that mode just depends in a simple way on the parameters of the slinky. So the period of oscillation of that mode is a good test for the parameters that we got out of the other modeling, out of the falling, the falling slinky. This is a very basic mode. This is what, I, I think this is a kind of breathing mode. Mm. It's this inner